The North Carolina Justice Center's Education and Law Project published a new report in September 2016 titled Fair Funding for Charter Schools, Mission Accomplished. We hope that, the, that this study is going to help the charter school debate, the charter school funding debate, become one that is grounded more in fact. That there really was this persistent number that kept coming up in the last legislative session that charter schools received only 75% of the amount of funding that other that public schools got of local funding. And we can never figure out where that came from. And it just, but it, sometimes when something gets repeated enough, it just starts to become part of the narrative. And so I think this was really important to make sure that we were coming from, from a factual place. And I think that'll help a lot of charter advocates is, is something that I didn't expect. Um, you know, there were some charter advocates who got up during the debate and said, you know, back in 1997, we would sit down with our budget and we would, you know, have plenty of money for all the services we wanted to do. We were able to do all kinds of innovative things. And now we can't do that. And some of them seemed to believe it was because something had happened that was making it so that the public schools were getting a larger share of their money or that somehow it was the public school's fault. And I think that's partially because of the 75% number. And so if we can come from a place of reality and, and fact, having actual facts on how much local funding these schools get, then I think it's going to move the debate forward where charter school advocates will be able to see that the real problem is that we are overall funding for our education system is too low and that they need to advocate for a higher level of per-people expenditure in order um, to, to make it so they can provide the services they want to provide and that they're in the same boat with public schools who want to do the same thing. That public schools would love to have smaller class sizes, to have more adults and, and teaching assistants in the classroom, to have up-to-date textbooks, to be able to provide pre-K for all children and have everyone ready for kindergarten. Um, but based on the current funding scheme, they can't do that and neither can charter schools. And so I'm hopeful this report will help get us to a place where we can recognize that, that that's the, that's the real solution, not trying to pit these schools against one another. We're just talking about local funds. Um, as you know, local funds comprise about 25% of total funding for public schools in North Carolina. So it's a pretty limited slice that we're talking about. Um, and then, of course, all of the bills talking about how to slice that 25% even slimmer. Um, you know, it's a really limited... Uh, it's really a limited impact debate, but it's a debate that takes up a lot of the oxygen in the room every session. Um, but hopefully this report will dispel some of those myths. The funding for charter schools is relatively fair, uh, they, and the charter schools, at least in 14-15, outspent traditional public schools by a small amount. If you looked at the um, local funding in the school district and compared it to the local spending in the charter schools that that district students attended. Um, it was 47 school districts were underfunded and 46 districts were overfunded. Um, so again, what you really have is a system in the state where there's going to be variation between districts and the charter schools, but overall uh, the system creates a, a, a rather equal amount of local spending between charters and traditional schools. Charter school funding is fair in the sense that it's equitable, meaning that charter schools and public schools receive roughly the same amount um, per people expenditure um, in the same county that they're in. But I think it is unfair, just as it's unfair to the public schools, and that's the amount of funding is inadequate for charter schools. Um, so in that sense, it really is unfair. So I can see where the charter school proponents are coming from um, in the fact that they feel like they need more money. When they sit down with their budgets and they start putting them together, um, it's really hard to make it all add up in the end. And, and if you want to pay your teachers more or have small class sizes or those types of innovations, they really are handcuffed by the really low level of per people spending that we have in this state. Um, I think right now we're ranked 45th in per people expenditure. We've just been languishing somewhere in that bottom five to ten spots for years now. And so all of our schools are really hurting. I can see where they're coming from and that it really is an inadequate amount of money. but. Um, looking for the funding in the public school system is not a place that really makes sense about right now. That we need the amount of public school funding to go up per student, and that will help charter schools and public schools. And charter school advocates are looking for more funding out of the public school system, and you can't get blood from a stone. And so I think at some point they're going to realize that the answer to their funding problems doesn't lay from taking from the public schools, it's from raising the pot for everyone. The report concludes that no matter how you cut it, local funding of North Carolina's charter schools looks awfully fair. Charter schools spent more local funds in fiscal year 1415 than traditional public schools, 
even when accounting for students' district of residence. If local spending were truly equalized, charter schools would have transferred almost $3 million to school districts.